So today we're talking about Seesaw Steam and Music in Our Schools Month. I'm Angela from Seesaw, and I'd love to introduce you to our host today, Amy M. Burns. Amy has taught pre-K through grade four general music for over 20 years at Far Hills Country Day School. She has authored three books on how to integrate tech into the elementary music classroom. She has presented many sessions on the topic, including four keynote addresses in Texas, Indiana, St. Martin, and Australia. She is a recipient of the 2005 Time Teacher of the Year, 2016 New Jersey Master Music Teacher, 2016 Governor's Leader in Arts Education, and the 2017 New Jersey Non-Public School Teacher of the Year Awards. So, so many amazing, amazing uh, things under your belt, Amy. We are thrilled to have you here today talking not only about Seesaw, but of course, STEAM and the amazing things you're doing in your music classroom. So, so thanks for being here. Thanks, Angela. It's such an honor to be here. I've always enjoyed all of the Seesaw webinars. So thank you for asking me to present. So I am gonna jump right into it. Um, for those who are music educators, it's Music in Our Schools Month. So this is perfect because this is Seesaw, STEAM, and Music in Our Schools Month. I tend to always uh, present uh, from the elementary standpoint. So I've been teaching pre-K through fourth grade general music for over 20 years. So we use Seesaw in, at Farhouse Country Day School. We've and we are in year four now of using Seesaw. I'm proud to say that I've been using it since day one, plus I'm also a mom of two daughters who go to my school. So I get both ends of Seesaw and I just love it. It is a game changer for the elementary music classroom because before Seesaw, I was using multiple different ways, like from websites to social media to try to get the curriculum in our classroom onto the parents' mobile devices. And it was challenging, but once Seesaw came along, it changed the whole game. And now my parents know that we do other things in the classroom besides prepare for a concert. So Seesaw is just amazing. We're gonna steam it up tonight. Um, and this is what we will be doing. Why you Seesaw with STEAM, and of course it's M-I-O-S-M. -S Music in our schools month, if you are a part of NAFME, which is our National Association for Music Education, then you know that this is our month that we just showcase music and we try to really get it to our parents and advocacy as well. So Seesaw will do all of this for us, enable us to do this actually much better than we could before Seesaw. We're gonna show, I'm gonna show some things that you could do next week with STEAM. And then I'm gonna show some project-based, problem-based learning, or as we call it, PBL, and how you can use STEAM with younger elementary as well as older elementary. So hang on tight and join me. I hope you're gonna enjoy what I show you tonight. I always do this, if you've ever seen me present, I always show this dessert buffet. It's because I'm gonna give you a lot of ideas. And as my seven-year-old would tell you, if you ate everything on the screen, you would be ill. You would get a bad tummy ache and get sick. You um, want to take little bites of everything, just tiny little bites. Don't go for everything I show you. Just a little bite of this and a little bite of that. That's a much better way to approach some of the things I'm gonna show you tonight. So when we're talking about STEAM, I tend to use the acronym STEAM with the A. So it's science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. And the reason that I tend to go STEAM over STEM, which is just science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, minus the arts, is just because when you think about STEAM, it's a philosophy. And it's this cross-curricular way of teaching. And when you're thinking about this long-term philosophy and this project and problem-based learning, the arts are innate because every child has an artistic quality in them. Uh, if you've seen or read about the whole neuroplasticity of the brain, children are innately artistic. And if it's not being molded and shaped between ages zero and three, they start to lose those neurons and the synapses, and I'm getting into neuro, neuroscience, but arts are there and they're innate in every child. And when we don't include them in STEAM, we're, all, we're lacking something very important and see artistic value of this philosophy. 
So why you seesaw with steam? Well, there's so many different examples I'm going to show you tonight, but they, they seem to focus around documentation, progression, reflection, showcasing from watching the progression of learning to the wow. So whether your school is requiring you to only do wow, you'll get a lot out of this. Whether your school is in, um, encouraging you to show progression from the start to the end, Seesaw just is a natural fit with STEAM for all of this. And of course, it's music in our schools month. So as I stated before, the advocacy showcasing what we are doing in our classroom, that's performance related and non-performance related, really getting our curriculum to the parents' mobile devices and they are really learning about us and music making and doing music and everything that involves music. So I'm gonna start with one of these that you can use next week. So <laughs> these are pictures from my classroom. I hope you enjoy the little um, emojis that I personally made <laughs> to put on there. But these are my threes and fours. So I have pre-K in my building and they are mixed ages of three, fours and fives. So a few years ago, this is probably about two years ago, I wanted to do this whole STEAM unit with them. And what I did was uh, in the month of December, I put a call out to the parents and um, to my colleagues and said, if you are using wrapping paper to wrap gifts, may I please have the spools from the wrapping paper when you're done? So they donated a bunch of them to me, which was great. So what I wanted to do with the students is start learning about pitch, in the relationship to size and shape. So boom whackers are a natural fit for this. And these are tuned percussion tubes. And most music educators know of boom whackers and probably have a set, at least one set in their classroom, especially with this age group. So the students were experimenting and this is where we hit the um, science, the sound, and of course um, music and the sound and the size. So if you can't get parents to donate, you can always go to Etsy and buy a bunch of these for about $10. You can always find them eBay. Someone's always going to have spools of these wrapping papers. As they were hitting them on the ground, of course, we play them, but the students will tell you they're hitting them. It's the one instrument I allow them to whack, as I call it, because they are boom whackers. We were using online-voice-recorder.com. This is an excellent free little tool to record any type of sound in a pinch. So if, whether you're, um, if you're using Chromebooks, this is fabulous because you can just immediately go onto this and then you can save it. So you can see the boom whackers being played there. And of course, in the next screen, before you save it, you can trim it. This is a free online tool provided by 123apps.com. And so there's a bunch of these free tools. They provide audio, video clipping, and editing. I mean, just, there's just a lot there. And it's HTML5 as opposed to Flash-based. So it works on the Chromebooks in our school. So the students can actually see sound waves and record themselves, which is so exciting for a three, four, and five-year-old when they see that come up on the screen. And they're not all using devices in my classroom. This is not one-to-one -one when I do this lesson. I'm just projecting my laptop onto the screen and the students, I hit record and they play. It's a great little um, way to show sound waves and science again and music. So here I gave them the tubes. And what's really great is they started to play the tubes and then they started to make the relationship here of the boom whackers and the tubes and pitch and size and sound and high and low. For three, fours and fives, I'm really just trying to get them to comprehend and internalize the concept of high and low sounds and they get it. I mean, you can really get creative and bring out something that can cut the tubes right there and then, and then start to relate it to, again, high and low and pitch and sound. Now I used here um, pick collage, because I think it was two years ago, so I'm not sure if we could put multiple photos up there yet, but and nowadays I don't use pick collage like this, I will use just uh, the multiple photos because it works much better than um, having to bring in another app. But of course, app smashing is one of the one most wonderful things about Seesaw when I'm using an iOS device. So very simple, you could do it next week if you uh, had these um, spools. I like them because they're harder than like paper towel rolls and toilet paper rolls. 
but level it up. This year, when my kindergartners, my five-year-olds, were discovering the Boom Whackers, we did this short little podcast. So I use Soundtrap. Soundtrap is this wonderful combination of Google Docs and GarageBand. You can use this on multiple devices. It's a, it's a music-making tool with loops and audio and recording devices and editing devices. And what you do is you can make a free account and use it as a teacher. If you're gonna have students use it, I use the paid EDU version. But for something like this, no, you can make this free account, soundtrap.com, and then um, record them. And this is what they did. So I hope you hear this. This is my kindergartners using um, Soundtrap, I'm using it, to just make this little uh, podcast about boom whackers and then I just uploaded onto Seesaw and parents love this so you can see this is the Seesaw post and take a listen and I'm just using the loops from Soundtrap this is the KL podcast from the musical episode one boom whackers KL you are holding in your hand a boom whacker can anyone raise their hand and tell me what sh shape your boom whacker is What's the shape of your boom whacker? I hear it. Are all the boom whackers the same? No. The boom whacker came from little to tall. Some are short and some are tall. What else do they make the same sounds? What sounds do they make? Do they make high and low? Excellent. So they got it. Sorry, I was I was kind of eliminating their names. That's why the sound was going in and out. But they totally got it. You heard him say they make high and low sounds. Here's another great one that you can do. Try to get this to go to the next slide. Thank you. Here's another great one that you can do just next week. And I cannot take credit for this. I'm giving a shout out here to Cherie Herring at the Hammond School in South Carolina because she and I will do STEAM presentations together at our at national music conferences and state level music conferences. She's also in a private school um, elementary music teacher. So she brought this one to the table and I did this with uh, kindergartners and they loved it. It's a hex nut plus a balloon. So you blow up the balloon and you put the hex nut in it and when you twirl it around, it will make a vibrating sound and a hum. But if you try it with a marble coin um, and different sizes, it won't do it. So it's a great way to introduce steam to your youngest of, of children and they're like enthralled when they watch you do this. Again, just like a five minute lesson within a lesson, it's great. I'm gonna give a shout out here to Mallory Martin. When I went to go on the activity library to see who had some STEAM music lessons, this one came up for grades three through five, and I love it. This lesson is so perfect because as you can read on it, you take a photo, recording, or video to show what you found that had sound, unusual places where you might see, hear, or feel sound, and explain what you noticed and how you knew it was sound waves. So it gives you, that again, that reflection piece. So Mallory, if you're on this, that's a great lesson. Thank you so much for sharing that in the activity library for grades three through five. Sheree did another one here um, that I love, and this is, uh, I'm gonna say this correctly, hopefully, Claudney, and this is Ernest Florin's Friedrich, I hope I'm saying this all right, Claudney. And he was a German physicist and musician. And his most important work, for which he is sometimes labeled the father of acoustics, included research on vibrating plates and the calculation of speed of sound for different gases. So he also undertook pioneering work in the study of uh, meteorites and is regarded by some as the father of meteor meteoritics. I hope I'm saying all that right. And then what she did here was taking the patterns and using a tonoscope. So this is a homemade tonoscope. It's a device that transforms sound into their visual representations onto the screen. So what she did here was use a PVC pipe, latex material, and rubber bands. So Sheree's students, as you can see in these pictures, they created a tonoscope. And then using salt or sugar, I think they used salt, I believe, and Sheree, correct me if I'm wrong, they um, blew into the tonoscope and then created these 
various patterns and of course it's the different ways you blow and the sound and it creates all these different it's the vibrations are obviously creating the patterns and again this is just something you could do next week especially if you have these materials and i know when she described this in our steam presentation this the students were enthralled so let's go into more of project and problem-based learning so here, these projects take more than just one class um, or a portion of a class. These are kind of more of a thought out cross curricular connection with our colleagues. Now, if you have colleagues that want to do this with you, that is amazing. Um, I am so fortunate to where I work that my colleagues and I work together constantly. And I love that. If you're not in an atmosphere like that, you can adapt these to the atmosphere you are in. So this is Younger Elementary in STEAM. So in the beginning of the year, my three, fours, and fives are, are experimenting with instruments in my classroom, how they produce sound, what they sound like, long and short. Um, these are just classroom unpitched percussion instruments. And so the one the thing they love the most are these sand blocks. <clears throat> and the sand blocks are so interesting because you can rub them together and clap them together. So when they were leaving my classroom, they asked me, how do you make these? And they said, I want you to ask your teacher because they do a bunch of studio projects. So they did. And here is what the studio teacher did. So the pre-K studio teacher did this. She made this whole uh, project onto, and they, she put it on the bulletin board. So I went up there, obviously, and started taking pictures. So they came back to her, and I didn't even warn her, so I felt a little bad. But um, she went with it. So and again, I just work with some of the best colleagues. So she started to ask them questions. They started to ask her, do you have sandpaper? And how do you turn out, how do you, how do they turn out as instruments? And then they started to say, maybe we can do this and this. And they started engineering here. Look at their um, blueprints of their instruments. And these are threes and fours and fives. You gotta love this. Like, look at these blueprints. They're fabulous. And they started describing it. They have handles. And when we clap them or rub them, and they made different sounds from the instruments they saw in Mrs. Burns' classroom. I forgot how to spell red because, of course, again, comes in the arts besides music. It's making these little sand blocks look appealing and artistic. Again, the A comes back into STEAM. So she's giving them different materials. There's their blueprints, engineering, science, right? Um, arts, mathematics, they have to measure these out. This is my daughter. So this is Sarah when she was four. And again, here comes the arts in. She's painting this. I like blue and red. I'm going to mix the blue on the red. So then I took it one step further and I decided to have music class in their classroom. They're wonderful. They'll bring the kids to my classroom, but I decided to have it in their classroom. And we did this song. If you know it, if you teach pre-K, you know this song probably, I Know a Chicken by Lori Bruckner. So we had these, um, it's a shaky egg song, but we didn't have shaky eggs in their classroom. So all I have are these beans. And the kids are like, well, put it in the glass jars. But then the other kids said, no, if you put them in the glass jars and you drop them, then we have glass shattered everywhere. And then that's going to be bad and we might hurt ourselves. I mean, these kids were inquiry-based learning. And this is what you do in pre-K, inquiry-based learning. So we figured out that we could use these paper plates. Not knowing my way around this classroom, we used tape first to try and keep the seeds inside. It didn't work. We failed at the tape. Luckily, one of the four-year-olds knew where the stapler was, and then we used the stapler, but I'm serious, we, we tried. And so they made these wonderful egg shakers, but they were, they were in the shape of plates. And of course, then we seesawed it. So again, at the time that I was doing this particular project, we used pick collage because they didn't allow the multiple photos yet. Now we can do the multiple photos. Beautiful. So let's talk about older elementary and STEAM. This one I collaborate with my science teacher. Again, you can adapt this in any way you would like, but we collaborate with the science teacher. So she goes off on a whole unit of sound and we both approach these essential questions. What is sound? What makes it high or low? What makes it loud or quiet? I did this with third grade. First, we start, if you can see here, we start with the markers and the beakers and water. And I give them a real problem. And last year, this was so real that the students were so concerned. So I'm going to give a shout out to music educator in Texas, Tracy Patterson, phenomenal music educator. Hurricane Harvey came through Texas right 
after her school year started and her classroom was no longer usable. She had to go and teach in two other classrooms. She created a wish list on Amazon and my students earned recorder stars, which we use from the budget to um, buy things for her classroom, like ukulele and some other things that she needed. And the students were so invested in what happened to her classroom. So I said, what if that happened to yours? What if you got flooded, your instruments were gone, but you still needed to perform a concert? You don't have recorders anymore. You have these songs with B, A, and G, but they'll give you beakers, water, and markers because we still have that. So the students figured out how to create pitch and sound using music, uh, beakers, water, and um, markers. And so they used the markers as hammers to hit the beakers and water, and they did it. They created it and they played their piece. In uh, science class, they're learning about sound. So I love using these. And this safe share, these are safe uh, videos. So when you click on these, there's no ads. This is an alternative to YouTube. So there's no ads and there's no comments. And these house of sound are a wonderful way for the students to experience sound and how it's made with instruments and especially because they will end up creating instruments from recycled materials. So we talk about tension and release, what makes it high and low. In this picture you're seeing a girl actually use a pipe, um, a balloon, and a straw and she made a didgeroo, which I know I just didn't say the word very well, but you know the Australian instrument. So then in science class, they are making the instruments. They go into the engineering process, blueprints. I mean, fabulous. They make it. They shop recycled materials, and here's what they make, which is phenomenal. They make um, guitars, and they make pan pipes. And this year, I'm going to try Makey Makey because one of the frustrations we've had over the years with the guitars is they want to play the melody that they compose, but they cannot do that. They cannot do that because the guitar is only playing chords. So we're going to try the Makey Makey this year to try and make it play more notes than chords. Using Note Flight, and we get this through Music First, um, we decide we actually create a melody line and a drum line because you saw in the previous slide they're making drums as well as pitched instruments. So they compose, and I use Music First because it gives a safe wall. And it makes it very easy for my to group my students because they don't have to use their own email addresses. And it, it's just a great learning management system with NoteFlight built into it. Soundtrap is built into it as well. So they <clears throat> create and they compose. And then they actually perform. So they perform in this way. You'll hear a little bit here. I'm just going to give you a little sample of them reflecting and performing. And of course, this went up to the seesaw. Oops, let me try that again. You're about to hear the premiere recording of the Song of Revolution by Daphne, Darian, Ellie, and Juliet. Ladies, is this song challenging to play? Did you write a challenging song? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And Daphne, what are you playing the song I on? I am playing the drums. I'm like, I'm we named it the song of revolution because the roll sounds like a, a drummer boy so i'm gonna be like the drummer boy let me fast forward so you can hear a little bit of this before i go into questions Four. So you heard there um, just the end of their composition. But when we do that whole steam unit, we use Seesaw continuously through the progression of this to show the process for them to reflect, document, show wow work, show what they know, sharing. We go into the design thinking process, and I love this um, visual of it because it has to share at the end. But this is exactly, if you're doing design thinking, this is exactly the process we went through, which is empathizing, prototyping, testing, failing, trying again, and eventually sharing. And then using Book Creator, I take all their compositions and create an ebook because you can put in the audio links and that video, because that, that audio came from a video, and then they share it with their parents. 
So I'm going to bring this. I'm going to say thank you. I got it, Angela. I got it to 841. I was going to try to stop at 840 because I know she wanted to do questions. And my daughter has made this avatar of me, which I said, that's awesome. But it looks at like me and when I was 20 and I'm not there anymore. <laughs> You'll take it. You'll take it. Take it, Amy. You love that. Um, great, great, day. great ideas. So those of you that are here hanging out live, if you have questions, you can go ahead and type them in the question box and we'll spend a couple minutes um, asking Amy some questions. The other thing to know while you're typing in the box is um, if you are here live today, we're going to actually have a survey that pops up on the screen after the webinar ends. So we would love your feedback. We always want to know how we're doing and what ideas you have next for other topics of interest. So make sure to share that as well.